Well, a very good evening to everybody out there in TV land. Eddie here reporting live from Flynn's in Margate, Florida. Thanks so much for tuning in. We actually are starting at 7.05, which is pretty pretty impressive for us. Usually we start a little bit later than that, but we're getting better and better and more and more proficient each and every day. So I want to – I think – is that camera you think is fine? I think we're good. Yeah, I think Maybe. we're good. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I want to, guys, just thank you for checking out the stream. So – all, uh, all our contact information is below, Flynn's Gaming FL, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, all that good stuff. And then you can find Ben at... You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, YouTube as Uber's Cosplay. That's U-B-E-R-S Cosplay. And all that information, guys, is below on the live stream, so you should be you should be good to be able to find it. Be sure to, if you have any questions or comments, drop them into the chat. We'll do our best to answer each and every one of them. We do have multiple computers going at the same, si- t- same time, so if we reference a question that you may not see on the live stream, by all means, definitely give us a moment. We'll tell you where it's coming from or what the question is. And if you happen to be listening to this, we're trying to do this whole podcast thing also. We're recording the audio. If you're listening to this at a later time, be sure to check out either one of our Facebook pages, either Flynn's Gaming, FL, or Uber's Cosplay on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, and you'll be able to uh, re-watch the whole episode, see the images, all that kind of school, cool stuff. Gerald, thank you so much for the 100 stars. Hey, Terry, what's up? So guys, anyways, wanted to say thank you so much to our Flynn's family who came out to support us. Rain and all. Yes. <laughs> on uh, on Saturday, it wasn't that bad. I thought the rain was going to be a lot worse. Thankfully, it seemed like it was only at the beginning. It kind of let up after a little while. Exactly. And we were able to get through all the main events. We had a great costume contest. I'll let Ben speak about that for a moment. Just thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts that you took the time and effort to come on out to Flynn's and to just celebrate uh, that time with us. We are going to do a little event, a little Halloween event on the 31st since it is a Saturday. We're going to do like a little pizza party. If you come in costume, it's $10 unlimited play for the evening of course we're gonna have our smash ultimate turning tournament going on we're gonna have halloween movies spooky music some candy so we're just having a little get together and also don't forget on friday october 30th we have our mario kart 8 deluxe tournament where you could win a switch nice. for first place so first place is switch and the mario set of mario kart um was it home home circuit and then second place is 50 dollars, and the mario set for mario kart home circuit and then third place is 25 fourth and fifth are passed to flynn so enough commercials ben so any thoughts about the uh the costume contest or anything like that it was really good turnout um i was expecting i was expecting maybe 25 people we got like 40 (laughs) just entering not just talking about attendees just attendees at the costume contest people in costume and stuff like that so there was a lot of people a lot of really great ones too um we had a few of our gundam fans come out as well yes representing some gundam cosplay uh lucas came out wearing his box gundam (laughs) costume And it was I, pretty cool, man. The box. I wish we had. I wonder if I could find a photo while you. While we'll, we'll have to put yeah. something I'll, up I'll after it, yeah. the fact. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, I lo- I actually give him my judges award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved how well designed it was for something so simple. Like you don't think much about cardboard, but he was able to move really well. Like the skirt armor all moved and everything. So I'm always a fan of like uh, impressive armor costumes that still maintain a lot of their mobility. And I believe Sean came out as well, and he had done together a quick Zaku costume like that morning. <laughs> Out of like uh, cardboard tubes and just junky head lying around like he had like a bowl from the dollar store's <laughs> helmet. But uh, I love that because it's like I go to like big cons like MegaCon and like all these ones all over the country. And I'm lucky to see maybe one Gundam costumer, much less two. <laughs> so <laughs> I was very happy with that. The Gundam came out in full force. Right. And, you know, we would have had a few more, I think. I know that a couple of people were held up with uh, some other outside things. So. Yeah, and it's difficult for people to get out with everything going on and everything. But um, I want to give a shout-out, too, to the other judges. Oh, heck they yeah. did a really good job. We Megan had, and... We had, we had Vivi Chibi, my Megatron cosplay, yep. Imaginary cosplay, all came out. Really did a bang-up job helping out with the judging and everything, getting every all the groups organized and everything like that, getting everything... You know, some semblance of sanity to it. <laughs> no, yeah. it was really cool. I'm super stoked to see where it goes with the judging mm-hmm. and to be able to break it into categories. So that's a recap of last uh, or the Saturday, actually, Saturday's cosplay event. So once again, you're on episode 13 of Let's Talk Gundam. If you're listening to this online, well, by all means, thank you so much for checking us out. Thank you so much for listening as well. Terry was saying, was looking through pics like all day. Here were some, uh, there were some awesome costumes. Mm-hmm. I agree, Terry. 
Play my play my wins. What is up, man? I also have a bunch of photos that I'll be uploading today, so be sure to check our Instagram or Facebook. I'm gonna do my best to tag everybody as much as possible. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Of course, guys, our Gundam uh, Flynn's Gundam Club is growing each and every day. Mm -hmm. By all means, be sure to check out that website. Be sure to check out that page when you get a chance. It's Flynn's Gun or Flynn's Gaming slash Gundam. All the information is right here of the uh, benefits of being part of the Gundam Club, all the sorts of discounts lots of and perks. lots of perks. All you got to do is go to flinsgaming.com slash Gundam, fill out your name, email, phone number, t-shirt size, mailing address, and how you would like to pay, and we'll take it from there. So that's just a little uh, a little shameless plug right there for the Flins Gundam Club here at Flins. And of course, mm -hmm. Thursday nights, your group is getting bigger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're hurting for that expansion. Yeah. <laughs> we're, run, we're running out of seats. <laughs> we are. But still, guys, don't let that stop you. I want to make sure that everyone feels included. And we're not just talking about Gundam. People do War. Sean does Warhammer over there. So yeah, he brought I, the whole drawer out of his cabinet. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Sean, thanks so much for the stars also. I saw that. He brought his whole drawer. We got Warhammer. Roxy works on usually D&D minis or different props. I Someone mean, I saw bringing in like the Megami device kits. Yes. Stuff like that. Yes, exactly. So all are welcome, guys. Don't ever feel you might be snagged into a video that I'm making for the night. So, you know, there's always a chance of that happening. Of course, we have beer and wine, snacks, drinks, sodas, all types of cool stuff. So, Ben, what do you have in store for us this evening? Well, now that I have access to all of my collection and stuff after the middle, yes. I wanted to kind of give a little more direction to some of these episodes. So this episode, I wanted to highlight some of the more unorthodox Gundam's designs. Okay. Like, um, and by unorthodox, what do you mean? Just stuff that you look at, and it's very different from typical Gundam stuff. Okay. Um, so you want to just jump straight into it? Yeah, let's go ahead and okay, jump perfect. straight into it. We let's see what camera two camera looks two. like. Oh, bam. Camera two. I was working on Ooh. cleaning this guy up briefly at the last build and paint night. This is the Master Grade Turn A Gundam. Ooh. The Turn A Gundam is Ooh. actually, I believe this is the only Gundam that was designed by a non-Japanese person that was in a mainline show. This was actually designed by Sid Mead. Okay. Sid Mead is a very famous designer. You probably know him from Blade Runner. Like he huh? did the designs of the spinner cars. Really? Or if you remember the movie uh, Short Circuit. Of course. With he BB designed eight. Johnny Five. Or Johnny Five, sorry. Johnny but he's five, also Johnny done five. stuff for Star Wars. I think he did the Whoa. A he was the one who did the <laughs> AT AT design. Really? He worked with Ford and did a lot of concept cards. Concept cars. Very futuristic stuff. Huh. But his 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 uh, style is usually colloquially referred to as futurism. It's kind of like very hard sci-fi mixed with a, a splash of Art Deco, and you can see that reflected in this design heavily. It's it's very Gundam in the the color scheme, but it's very unlike Gundam in the the design is all very geometric, very flowing lines, and you can see just like at the back of it is almost completely bare, but there's all these mechanical details in the back of the leg that's actually like its engines and things but like i said very big departure from previous gundam designs and this was actually a big hey, centerpiece of the gundam anniversary they did back in 99 that was the really gundam's 20th anniversary so this was their centerpiece for that anniversary yeah this was like they did a big push of gundam back then called the big bang project and turn a gundam was the centerpiece of it they did a couple things to celebrate this anniversary. They had Turn A Gundam, which was kind of a big deal because Tomino, the creator of Gundam, came back and was directing the show again. He had kind of taken a step back for a while, so this was kind of unusual for him to come back and direct a Gundam again. And it was a Gundam that was not directly related to the original series because he had directed the original okay. Zeta, Double Zeta, and Char's Counterattack, right. and uh, Victory Gundam as well, but he hadn't done Wing X and all those other side stories, G Gundam and everything, those were all different people. He wasn't really involved. So this was So he of, like started it, took a step away from it. Yeah, the studio kept going with different directors and different people. And then this time he came back. And this time he came back and it's very Tamino has a very particular style of storytelling. Like um his things is Gundam when he's directing it's never really about the robots and the conflict and everything. It's just about the characters and very much so with Turn A Gundam. Um, so it just happens to have robots in it. It happens to have robots in it, but <laughs> even this even this main unit, the Turning right. Gundam, plays a very small role in the story as a whole. It's much. It's a very character driven story. And huh. to get a little into the story, um, it's far far distant future, but the world has basically been destroyed by a cataclysmic war okay. that is like 
it's so it happened so long ago and it's so catastrophic that nobody even really knows what happened. They just call it the dark history. And because everybody's dead from that time, there are people alive. Okay, and there are even some people that were alive from back then. They've right. just been in cryo sleep, but it's it's never really dealt too much into. Like there are people that remember huh. it. Okay, but it's so long ago, and they've been in for sleep for so long, they've almost gone crazy. So they use like the ambiguity of it, like for yes. suspense, kind of like you wondering what happened. For for reference, the idea is that at some point in the distant past, all the Gundam universes were happening along the same time. Okay. That's the basic idea for Turn A Gundam. Okay. Something happened, and everything kind of collapsed, and then centuries, centuries later, Turn A Gundam happens. Okay. All right. So they'll be going around on Earth, and they'll be digging a hole, and they'll come across an old mobile suit, which will be like Azaku. And it'll just they'll dig it out of a mountain, and they'll say, what's this thing? I don't know. It's some kind of giant robot. Let's see what it does. But um, for re- the idea is at, at the story at the, pl- at the point the story takes place, Earth has regressed so far back that they're only just getting back to the Steam Age. It's basically like their technology level is America in the 1920s. They have like biplanes, okay. steam-powered ships and trains and that kind of thing, but no high technology. And there are still advanced humans with technology living on the moon, but the moon cannot support them. So they only have small amounts of people alive at any time out of cryo sleep, and they kind of rotate out. Right. And they've been waiting for the Earth to recover from this horrible war right. so they can migrate back to Earth. And they go back to Earth, and there's still people there. And they're like, okay, so how do we reintegrate our advanced society with what is basically a, they consider backwards savages at this point? Yeah, like 1920s, right? And they send a few people down as kind of spies, and the main character, Lauren, is one of them. And they just integrate into society for a few years to see, okay, go out there and kind of feel it out for us. Tell us if, these be, if they're ready for us to come back. And Lauren ends up becoming the chauffeur of, a fam, of like a wealthy family, like a very influential family on the earth, uh, the Keel family. Keel family, sorry. And... About a year passes, and then the moon, des- the moon people decide they're going to come back. <laughs> but the moon people have their own factions as well. There's a very militaristic faction, which is kind of like the descendants of the warrior race, of the, uh, the warrior. Right. And so they want to just... It's like the Klingon. Yeah, they're basically like that. They're, they're going to come in and like, oh, oh we're not going to deal with all these savages. Oh we're just going to take over the earth again, and it'll be like the glory days. Okay. And then you have the Diana Force, who is right. like the... the the forces loyal to the princess of the moon people that want to kind of live in harmony with everyone, but she doesn't have really full control because she's just a young girl and she's being used as a pawn by other people in their government and stuff like that. So the the story is very much about this conflict between these different forces. Um, And for a simple way to put it, it's kind of like a story. It's this, it's basically the, the, a tale of two cities with giant robots in space. Oh. Because Di- Diana, the queen of the moon, when she comes down, it turns out there's somebody Hang on, living. Gonna, I gotta plug. Go, go ahead. He's gotta you pl- keep talking. Go ahead. You gotta plug in your battery. He's gotta recharge his laptop. Sorry. So the family he's working for, the Keel family, there's um, the daughter of the family, is almost an identical twin of the moon princess Diana, and at several points in the story, they so at one point the girls are out there washing their clothes and stuff and they're at the river and the Gundam just takes its hand and pulls the the soil away to make like a channel so the girls can go ahead and wash their clothes in the river but not get swept away by the current. So little stuff like that you wouldn't expect a suit to do but there's also some other funny stuff like at one point they have to transport cattle. Oh, is that what you get a little cow? So you give a tiny little cow that comes with this kit and it actually fits inside that chest cavity because that's where they carry it in the show. (laughs) So he picks up the cow and puts it into he, his he chest. He opens up the chest and there's the cow in there and that's how they get it around when they have to Is this one cow or is it like a bunch of cows? It's only one in the, in the scene. But just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just neat little stuff like that that you don't typically see. It's kind of like using an uh, oxen to pull like a Land Rover. You know? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like you're using this giant robot to move you know, simple cows around. <laughs> But, so, uh, so, so basically, so they find this. So this robot, or this, this, uh, this, this, this mobile suit, this yeah. mobile suit is is from the the dark age. The dark it's from days. it's from the dark history. Our dark history. All they know about it really is it's the turn A, and there's a sister unit called the turn X. Um, it's a little bit vague, but basically, these two were largely responsible for all the destruction that happened. Okay. It ends up being that the suit is 
has a certain system in it called a moonlight butterfly, which is like a nano machine system. And the nano machine system will send out all these tiny little robots that just destroy technology. And that's why humanity was brought back to such a base level because these two suits fought. They both activated their moonlight butterfly and it wiped out all technology on the planet. Whoa. So everything. It just and then turned it to dust. It's full circle because the robot's sitting there, the mobile suit's sitting there. They find it they and find then they it. begin to use it for good. And they begin to use it for good again after that long history where everything was really awful. But even like the, uh, the little crotch piece comes off for the suit and is a little escape pod Corlander. That's where the pilot sits in the suit. They don't sit in the ah. chest like in other Gundams. They actually sit on the end of the little crotch piece there. Yeah, you're right up close front with all the battle. Like you're, yeah. <laughs> you're front to front. Well, that's the, that's the one good thing is they dig up other mobile suits, like I said, like Zaku's and things like that. But the turn eight is incredibly powerful. So Wen says, that's why I have the butterfly wings. Yes, there are some. The, the Master Grade, I don't think it ever had the butterfly wing effect. You might have been able to get it with like a P Bandai type thing. But uh, normally it would connect here into the back. You can see where all these circular, yeah, se circular sections. These all open up as well. But to get a little bit more into the designs, like I said, this was the first time an American had done designs for Gundam. And you can see on the back, there's no like engines, like the thrusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On this suit, it's all in the back of the legs. And just as an example of the mobility of the suit is when you move John the legs, the stars. you can see all those thruster panes move independently of one another. They can't see because you're blind. There you go. <laughs> oh, cool, man. So it's a very well-designed kit. All this, all these parts are mobile. And you can just see just by the little panel lining I did, there's a ton of surface detail on the kit. All those lines can be panel lined and really bring the detail out of it. But to talk a little bit more about some of the designs, I actually brought in a book I have that is actually pretty rare. This is Mead Gundam. This is a collection of all the concept artwork that Sid Mead did when he was designing Turn A Gundam. This book is actually really long since out of print. Um, I see it on Amazon for like no less than $130. It eBays for like $250 and stuff like that. If you want to see it, there are ways to see it online. There's people that have scanned it, done PDFs and stuff like that. But this is really great because you get all these lovely sketches and things that Sid Mead did as he was designing the Gundam. And you can see here he took a picture of the original Gundam. And he has all of his notes about what he liked about the design, what he didn't, what he wanted to change. And all of his notes are in English. And he compares it to some of the more contemporary Gundams of the time, like the Fulvernian here on the side. Dang. So why is this book rare? This book is just rare because it's out of print. Like, I, I got this at a con, and the guy didn't know what he had. I think I paid, like, $5 for the book. But they only printed this, like, I think once. And then they did a reprint fairly recently. Right. But even then, it's hard to find. And people, even the scans were hard to come across for a while because nobody wanted to destroy it. He's going to lay it flat or cut them. Right. And Sid Mead actually just died last year. So stuff of his kind of went up in value right away because people loved his particular style of artwork and designs. But it goes through each suit individually. And here it starts with his original concept for the Gundam. You can see it's quite a bit more bulky and fleshed out. Right. Um, Tamino actually refused this design early on. He didn't like it. Okay. It wasn't that he didn't like it. He didn't think it suited a main character, but the design was probably his most fleshed out. So he went back to the drawing board on it and started coming up with something more akin to the turn A Gundam that we have here. Let's see if I can arrange this camera a little bit better. Yeah, if you want to bring it closer to you. Bring it over. Let's see if we can just do it this way. Well, it's backwards, so flip the book upside down. <laughs> Perfect, dude. Perfect, man. You're good. Love it. Right. Yeah, you can see here, so he's fleshing out more of the design. <sighs> Dang. And eventually he ended up on something closer to what we get in the model kit. Hang on. Let me go through these other sketches. Yeah, you can see him, like, in, in the sketches, you can see him breaking down, like, its mobility. Yes. Yeah, so its articulation. He, yeah, his... His uh, eye for things like that are, is particularly impressive, I think. 
But it wasn't just, like I said, the Turn A Gundam he designed. Here is where it's getting more concrete. And I'm flipping through quite a bit of this, but everything is in this book from the initial concept. And you'll see that on some of these drawings, there's his notes and then some of the notes of the Japanese design staff. Yeah. Where they're going through it, just kind of fine tuning it. And here they're breaking down. You see how all the panels on the back and everything are put together. One says that's why they have Sumo Gundam too. Yes. You'll see, we'll go to the Sumo, which is the next one. And they liked that design so much, they actually reused it as one of the enemy suits, which was the Sumo. Yeah, but here, we'll flip back to that. Here is the Sumo. The Sumo was the originally the concept for the Turn A Gundam, but uh, just reworked to work as an enemy suit because they liked the design. They just didn't think it suited a hero character where it's got that very flat, round head. Yes. And then you have some of the more unorthodox designs like the flat, which is basically like a cargo hauling mobile suit almost. Like this looks like something that would be right at home in Star Wars, I think. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and you can definitely see some of that, some of that very Star Wars look in some of these designs. Very good eye for detail. He's got that very. Uh, he was involved in a lot of the designs for Tomorrowland, oh, so you can kind of see that influence as well. Like I'm sure if you've been around Disneyland yes. in classic Tomorrowland, you recognize some of this kind of art. And this was one of the other suits, like the ones that attacked in the first episode was this giant monstrous suit called a Wadam. And it's like a giant bipedal, almost World of the War, World, War, War of the, the World Worlds. style robot where it's hugely alien. It's, va it's only vaguely humanoid. Yeah, but a very cool So design. when they invaded, when the people from the moon, moon invaded the Earth and they arrived in those, you know, humanoid type, you know, mobile suits. Mm -hmm. Did they think that they were alien or human? They thought they were monsters. Oh, monsters. Okay. And they're out there like with guns and muskets trying to that shoot at these things. They're thinking like 1920s, so you know. Yeah, they oh, Okay, that makes like sense. Like they they tried to fight they try to fight them off in the beginning with biplanes and it goes about as horribly as you'd imagine. <laughs> Dang, that would be. Yeah. It's like going against tanks with like sticks and rocks. It's more or less what they do. It's it ends up being quite a rout. But yeah, um, if you can get your hands on this art book, especially if you're into Sid Mead's designs in general, even if you're not a fan of Gundam, I think this is a great book to have. I got very lucky to get it when I did. Um, when I first got it, like I said, it had never had it only had the one printing. It's had a second printing now, so it's a little more common. But at one point, this was like a three hundred dollar book. It was really hard to get. Build Divers Mobile Suit now. When, what are you referring to? He's talking about there's some of these designs have mm -hmm. showed up in oh the build in some of the new shows. Oh, okay. But yeah, Mead Gundam. If you guys want, if you're in the, if you want to come to Build and Paint Night, mention it, and I'll bring this in, and you guys can take a look at it. And like I said, don't be too scared of the price because okay. even though it's hard to get, um, there are PDFs where people have scanned this online now, so it's easier to see. But very cool. I love seeing like the thought process behind his designs because I've I've been a fan of Sid Mead's even before Gundam. Like I love Short Circuit. Like Johnny oh, Five. Yeah, Johnny Five. Johnny Five is probably my favorite movie robot. Like it's Johnny Five. So Do they cool. have a Johnny Five kit? I wish they did. I think there's like 3D printed ones you can get, but that's about it. If there was, I'd grab one in a second. Oh man, what talking about talking about model kits? Talking about model like you know in terms of like classic characters of models that should be created. Um, Recently, I ran into the Thousand Toys version of um, the Iron Giant. Oh, the yeah. The diecast version of it. That's a very cool robot. I mean, the too. articulation is utterly amazing. But, but yeah. nonetheless, good history lesson. Yeah, but Turn A Gundam uh, came out back in 99. It's, I believe, 49 episodes. And then there's two compilation movies if you want to see, if you want to just see a condensed version as well. Um, I don't believe this is streaming, but if you wanted to buy it, you can get it from Right Stuff. I don't believe it has a dub. I believe it's only subtitled. But a very cool, very interesting chapter in Gundam and a very big departure. Like I said, it's not it's not your typical fare. It's very much like um like I said, it's that like old timey kind of somewhat contemporary setting of the nineteen twenties. So you'll see a guy driving around in a Model T 
with this thing walking alongside him and nobody bats an eye at it. It's just something they live with <laughs> in that world. When says that he's going to wear gloves when he turns the page. Oh, yes. Pages. Just <laughs> the other good thing about the Turn A Gundam is this was kind of an oddball design even when they made it in a Master Grade. Right. This was the 100th Master Grade. So it was kind of a big deal that they were due, not even just that they got to 100, but that they picked such a strange suit to do. So when you got it, you didn't just get the instruction manual like you do with every Master Grade. They gave you this neat little art book from Turn A Gundam. Let me go ahead and bring this over here yeah, as well. For sure. So Kill this it. art book is basically like the road to the Master Grade. So you get some really nice fold-out artwork in there. And you can see Master Grade number 100. It was a very big deal when this thing came out that they even did this. Because for years, no one, everyone was convinced they would never do a Master Grade of the Turn A. The design was too weird. It was too un-Japanese. They would never do it. Some nice breakdown of the posability of the kit. More of Sid Mead's artwork so did and they, the design. Did they choose to do this kit as a hundred model because of Sid Mead? They 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 did it specifically because it's like I said, it's the oddball, but it's also one that was directed by Tamino, and it's so unique. Like I said, they've never had anyone else come in like this and design a suit. They knew they were going to sell out. <laughs> they, well, it's a very popular suit. Um, the show is kind of divisive. There are some people that like it. And there are some that's like, it's too not like Gundam. I don't like it. I, I like it because it's like, this is one of the Gundam shows that I got my girlfriend to watch that she got really into because it wasn't just all giant robots and craziness. Line. It was really interesting and the characters were good and the art was really great. This was actually the last Gundam show to be made with traditional ink and pen cells. What? After this, everything went to digital ink and paint. So if you're if you're one of those person that goes out and collects anime cells, like a purist, this, yeah, this is the last Gundam that was drawn. Everything else after this so was you digital. You can find paint. the cells. You can still find the cells of this, but after this is like if you go to Seed, Seed was all digital paint. There's no drawing cells for you to get. Nothing uh, like that. So turn a, this was like the end of the era of traditional animation. Interesting. But let's go ahead and go through here. They have like a little page with some of the character designs. Like I said, very robust cast. All very interesting. Even some of the bit characters. That's Princess Diana. Actually, it's Princess Diana dressed as Lady Keel. Because like I said, because they look identical. And this is like a little comic making fun of, oh my god, they finally made their master grade of the turn A. But here you can see like the artwork, very reminiscent of the turn of the century, where it's like the... Uh, person in like a ticker tape parade, news parade type thing. Yeah. And just some of the other model kits available. These are some of the original model kits that came out when the show was running. Hmm. And a little advertisements from the other kits coming out. But yeah, I'm not sure if they give you this art book if you were to buy the kit now. This might have been like an original pack-in, but I got this when this kit first came out. I jumped right on the turn. In 1999? Um, the 1999 was when the show ran. The kit itself, when did this come out? Mm, I want to say 2005. No, 2007 is when this came out. 13 so, years ago. Yeah. It's, it was a while ago. And it took them a while. Like I said, when it came out, nobody thought that the turn A was ever going to get a master grade. Hmm. So, bit of a shock. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. We have uh, we're, we got 20 minutes or so. How, how is it? So, with those stickers that come with it? The, it comes with some very nice uh, heat transfer decals. So, it's not stickers. You attach these to the kit and you just rub it with your finger and the heat transfers it to the kit. They're awesome. better than stickers and not as hard to apply as water slide decals. Most master grades for a time came with these heat transfer decals. I'm noticing they've kind of started to steer away from them and like the Vercaz will always come with water slides, but the heat transfer ones, they're not doing quite as often as they used to. Okay. What else you got for us? Um, well, speaking of turn A, I thought we could segue into one of the kits you guys got on the recent order. Awesome. That people could come in here and buy. Stay There's tuned actually... to the end, guys. We're going to show you some kits that we have in upcoming orders that have been already yes. secured, and they were on their way. But this is one that is actually from Build Divers, but it's based on a design from Turnay. Ooh. This is the Wadom Pod. Now, if you Don't remember, we have it pilot? Um, if you, do you remember the guy that came in and had the girl we robot? Have it. Yeah, you had that one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh... Remember how I said the moon people come down and they attack with these giant walker of course, robots? Of course. This is one of those, but it's a character in Build Fighters has taken that kit and customized it to her own style. So it's got different colors, it's got a few different accessories, but this is the 
Wadam from Terne in a high grade size. Now, the Wadam in Turn A is like twice the size of a normal mobile suit. It's hugely tall. It's like a monstrous mobile suit. So in high grade, you can just see by the size of this box, even though this is smaller, this is not master grade sized, it is a very tall kit once it's assembled. Dang. Um, but this was also designed by Sid Mead. You can see very much the same design cues, the same kind of styling with the armor and the lines. Did he do the design on Short Circuit? He, yeah, he did the design for Johnny Five. No, 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 no. I mean, not short circuit. My bad. Battery's not included. The little robots. Um, no, but the battery's not included. That was the same robot from Short Circuit. Oh, because the head, just different the head, parts. The head looks. It was way. the exact same prop robot. It was. It was the exact same. Ah. One. They just they had leftover parts. The studio made another movie. Dude, killer man. It's weird that I even know that. Yeah, it's <laughs> because the head doesn't the head look like the. It's it's the same eyes. The battery's not included. Yeah. Uh, but um. All right. To open this guy up. Segway. If you're a fan of Turn A too, this was a very much this was a cool suit to see in the show because this was another suit that everyone thought was never gonna get life again as a kit. Um the colors are different from the traditional Wadam in the show. In the sh in the original Turn A Gundam show, the Wadam was mostly white and black. And here it's this kind of teal, bright blue for the additional pieces white and black so it's a very interesting color scheme and you can see how large the parts are this is a very large kit let me go ahead and get the instruction manual out to show you guys set this aside yeah but you can see we had people in here building the kit of her may yes, oscar was building. they have a model kit of just the girl as oscar well was building her and he put it in his computer case right but you can see you have the regular Wadam, and then you have some of her additional parts that she made for the suit, which right. is this leg armor and this skirt armor in the back. Go Dude, ahead and open this man. up. The colors are like pop. Like it's yeah. there for a high grade. Honestly, if someone doesn't buy this, I'm probably end up buying it for myself. So <laughs> be in a hurry to get it if you want to come grab it. But yeah, you can see there it is posed alongside the May, the uh, mobile doll May suit as well. But a very atypical Gundam. Like, it doesn't look like... If you were to see this on a shelf, you wouldn't think this was from no, Gundam. No, no, no. It's got, like, these tiny vestigial, almost like T-Rex tiny arms. Like a crab. Yeah, and the all the weapons, like its beam cannons and things, are built into the head. It doesn't carry any of its own weaponry. Hmm. But a very cool design. I don't think we... We just opened the box for this, so we don't even have the price on it yet. No. But if you guys are interested in Turn A Gundam and you want to have something very unique on your shelf, or if you're into build divers, this is definitely a kit worth picking up. I think we got two of them. I um, think so, but I think one was already on our gun. I think our Gundam Hanger I think I think one of them might have been the club member. Had order. been purchased one. And we once again, guys, we try to keep a nice assortment. Yeah, we try to keep a variety. And I saw this one come up, and I'm like, I know there's people that come here that are into Gundam and would love to see something from Turn A Gundam. So I wanted to make sure we got some of these to show everyone. Beautiful but yeah, command. the Wadam pod, definitely worth checking out. I think, like I said, uh, you'll post up on your Instagram or something when we have everything priced out and ready course, to sell. Of course, 100%. But if you guys come to Build and Paint Night, if this is still here, definitely worth checking out. I think it's a very cool suit. If so, it's still here by then, I might get it myself. <laughs> so. so speaking about kits, so we have a couple upcoming orders, unless right. there's something else you want to add. No, I think that's pretty so much it. So we have some, uh, some upcoming orders, guys, that we want to make sure that you are aware of. Some upcoming kits, my bad. Upcoming kits that we want to make you aware of. So what's the first one you'd like to talk about, Ben? Kind of sneak preview. Well, I saw a few Master Grades come up here, and the first one was the Astray Blue Frame. Here we go. Master Grade. Yes. Ooh. The Astray Blue Frame. Um, Astray is a side story of Gundam Seed. Man. So... These ones have showed up in animation, but not in the uh, not in like a main character type of role. They've shown up in like little like side story snippet animations and everything like that. But the designs are very flashy, especially compared to some of the mainline units in Seed. I think some of the Astray ones are probably more popular than some you of the mean, main even character the ones. Even the intricacy right there on the like the forearm, that little circular piece, you know. Yeah, the whole idea is the Astray units are like low armor but high mobility. So that's where they're they're almost a little bit skeletal. They're very thin and gaunt. Yeah, even like the waistline looks like extremely, extremely right. different. And the blue unit is specifically for heavy firepower and brutal close range attacks. 
if you go ahead and switch to the other picture, yeah, you'll sure. see what I mean. That backpack transforms into a giant two-handed buster sword style weapon. And you can see in the middle of the buster sword, it opens up and has a cannon inside of right it as here. well. But um, all this is replicated on the master grade. It's highly posable, super detailed. This is a fairly recent kit. I think it came out in 2007, I think. Man. So highly posable, very cool, worth checking out. If you guys are into seed, this is probably one of the more popular. Is that a sword somewhere. I see? He's got little daggers on the side. It seems uh, it seems almost ridiculous to carry daggers when you've got a sword that yeah, large. Let me see the, okay, so yeah, you can see him right here. Yeah. On both sides. Yeah, he's got two that's daggers. That's like for really up close and personal. Yeah, that's that's when he, maybe when he's got to throw away the sword for some reason or another. Or he needs to, or he can't fit it through a door or something perhaps. Man. Yeah, this is one we have coming in. So if you guys are a fan of seed, specifically some of these designs from Astray, Go ahead and pick this one up coming in. Awesome. And we also have one more coming in. Oh, let me zoom out. Yep, zoom out. This <laughs> so is the Master Grade Psycho Zaku from Gundam Thunderbolt. Ooh. Yeah. This is a very, very big kit. It's a Verka kit. I've mentioned Verka in the past. Yes, Verka is specifically designs done by Hajim Katoke. Uh, Verk, Verk Haw kits are always pushing the limit of what the medium of model kits can do. You can see on this one, like all the joints are covered with like a fabric. I don't know if you can zoom in to like, okay, let's see, yeah, let's see let's all the it. biceps and around the pipes on the waist. Right it's there. all covered with like a fabric covering. Does this orange part? No, no, no. Like where the joint is. Oh, see right how like that crumpled paper look? Yes, yes. It's actually like a cover that goes over the joint. What? Think of it like a, like you ever see like the space suits the astronauts wear? Yeah. It's that kind of material to help cover and protect the suit. Um, in the lore, Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is not is part of Gundam, but it's like a retelling. It's not really canon, but it's the one year war. But it's like one year war with a super hardcore technology feel okay. to it and a very brutal like story. The story is very violent and Dang. it's very heady. So but, I can um, see here, is that the wrinkly the, the the material you're talking about too right there? Right. And in the context of the story, they're fighting in all these areas where colonies have been destroyed and there's wreckage everywhere. So they have these coverings to keep sensitive parts of the suit safe from this debris. But if you back it out a little bit, you can see that this suit comes with a ton of accessories and weapons. That booster backpack out of his back is gigantic. It's like probably over a foot long, I think, when it's fully assembled. But this is one of the biggest master grades you can get. ton of parts. I think this might... This is probably just behind the FAS in terms of number of part count. But uh, you can see all these subarms on it as well to hold all those additional weaponry units. Like I said, they kind of went with a more realistic thing, so the suit doesn't just have its two arms. It also has all these subarms off its backpack to hold additional uh, okay, weaponry. Okay, okay. So, like, this right here... And two seconds. So this right here is, like, the backpack yeah. that holds the arms, that hold the weapons. And it's, it'll, the arms will do things, like, in the show. Like, the arms will reach out and reload his guns for him. Or they'll just hold out additional guns so we can fire multiple weapons at once. All kinds of things. And this is controlled by one pilot? It's controlled by one pilot, but in the context of the story, you can see how complicated the suit is. It's so difficult to control that they, no normal person could do it. And there's actually a division of soldiers in Xeon who are soldiers that were maimed in battle. They had either arms or legs amputated because they were hurt. And they had them replaced with cybernetic parts. And the cybernetics are pretty crude. Like, it's just like a claw. They can't really do anything with it. But this Zaku, what it can do is it can link up to those nerve endings directly. And it can operate as if it were your own limbs. So there's a character. Um, the character of the pilots, this is a guy called Daryl. And he's, by the end of the show, he's actually become a quadriplegic. He has no arms, no legs. They were lost in battle. But they hook him up into the suit. And he's strapped into it like to where he can't even move, basically. But his arms and legs, the stumps, go into this control mechanism, and he's able to move the suit as if it was his own body. So no normal person can handle this Zaku, but Daryl... Because he can use control. He can probably move multiple parts with different nerve endings. On yeah, he can control it as quickly. if it were his own body. It gets to the end of the show, and um, the battle's over, and he floats out of the suit, and he's just, he's just a torso. And the guy sees him, and he's like, you're kidding me. This... This guy beat me? He's barely even a human. There's nothing left. Man, that's crazy. You know, it sounds like one of those movies where they use the mind. The mm. body is like no no longer useful. Yeah. They like, tap into the mind's conscience. Very similar to that. But like I said, 
Thunderbolt is a is a very brutal show. Um, okay. Like I said, it's very violent, so I don't really recommend that for younger people. But um, if you're looking to get into like a more hardcore Gundam, where the technology is really more fleshed out, the settings a little more hard edged than the original Gundam. It's not like that '70s super pastel. Everything like the character designs are kind of dated and things like that. Thunderbolt is probably a good gateway for people that are looking to get into Gundam in a more modern sense. Hmm. And the model kits are very heavily detailed. I mean, you can just look at the outside, even discounting all the weapons. It's got a ton of verniers all over right. it. Um, tons and tons of little detail. And this is actually based on the Master Grade 2.0 Zaku mm-hmm. as well. So you can take off that huge backpack, and the suit itself is super poseable, even when it doesn't have all that giant weaponry and fuel tanks and everything hooked up to it. But uh, check this one out, guys. I do not recommend this for newbies. <laughs> yeah, this, this box is this huge. This one is like a really difficult kit to put together. There's tons and tons of little parts. It's, like I said, there's probably only one or two Master Grades bigger than this. Well, but, we have some um, questions coming in. I know my yeah, chat's yeah. been kind of acting up. So it says... Uh, yeah, I want to... Sean says I want to pick this one up. Yeah. I tried to get as IBO many as I was could. the same. I'm sorry? It says IBO... Gerald, was that you? No, Amel says IBO was the same. Yeah, I, Iron-Blooded Orphans is the oh, okay, recent okay, Gundam okay, show okay. where it's it's very grounded. Like, they're in space and stuff, but it's like, uh, they're not like traveling around at warp speed. They have to like slingshot around and everything's very slow. Okay. No one's firing lasers at one another. They all have bazookas and machine guns. There's no beam weaponry. Like, uh, suits get hit and you see like armor explode off and the next episode the armor's still gone. They don't, they don't have parts. They have to just scavenge whatever they have to fix up these suits. That's a big thing with Iron Blooded Orphans as well. It's it's about, you know, child soldiers and they're fighting with ancient technology that no one knows how to fix anymore. So yeah, oh, IBO is a very brutal show. That ending is oh depressing. So Sean says IBO is what got me back into Gundam last year. Yeah. I I got into IBO really late. Like I didn't see it till like two years after it ran, but it's a really good show. Cool. Well, so we yeah, have, that's some of the things we have coming up soon. Among many other many other pieces, we're getting more and more uh, solidified thanks to Ben he- Ben's help in trying to get everything uh, lined up, ordered correctly, shipped on time. And then once again, you guys, um, with what's going on in the world today around us, shipping is delayed in some facets. Um, so it's definitely interesting. And um, yeah, so I'm super stoked to see what comes in and see what everything comes about. But a uh, Let's Talk Gundam would not be the same without some interesting snacks, so we'll end the show this way. Ooh, this yes, I almost it, forgot. Yeah, we'll, end, we'll end it a little differently this time. So I kind of went to our Oriental Market, or I didn't kind of, I did go to the Oriental Market, and I found some interesting snacks for us. So the first one I found was tempura Ooh. seaweed. That's interesting. So why don't you pop that open for us, Ben? I know you can't eat seafood. Does seaweed count? I think I'll be okay. Okay. As long as it doesn't, you know, make the whole place smell like fish, I think. No, I think I think it's okay. So if you're like seaweed, we've been asked about seaweed before here at Flynn's. I'm like, you know what? It'd be interesting to have one. They recommend you could eat it alone. You could put it. You mix it in noodles. You can eat it as a snack. You can eat it everywhere. Yeah, eat in your car. All right, cheers. All right, cheers. You know what? I kind of like that. I agree. That's actually pretty good. Very actually, you know what, dude? It's only it's only six percent sodium. It tastes huh. a lot saltier than it is. It smells salty, that's for certain. And it's half a bag. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's a half a bag. <laughs> Man. <It does laughs> they get a glass of water. <laughs> it does it is good lamb. Man. Oh man. Holy moly. I don't know what it is. Yeah, so um, oh my gosh. what I was trying to do with this episode was bring in some of the more obscure suits right. that people might not know about. And like I said, this show ran back in 99. And like I said, Gundam restarts every couple of years with a new show. Like uh, the guy was mentioning Iron-Blooded Orphans. Yeah, exactly. In a few months, I'm sure they'll probably announce another show is going to start coming out. You know? And it'll be completely unrelated to anything else. But these old ones, they're cool to go back to because there's a long history to them. It's interesting to see how the design has evolved over time. Different people have come and put their own stamp on Gundam and things like that. And it's a beautiful looking kit. I mean, all in all, it's very it's so smooth unique lining. too. I, I, I there's love... like there's like a mon there's like a, a a nod to the past 
Yeah. But it's also futuristic looking. Yeah, and I like it because you put it on your shelf, especially next to other Gundams, and it's very much obviously in the lineage, but it stands out so much, not just because of the, the obvious mustache, but like all the heavy panel line designs, the way all the lines flow very well into one another. And it's like I said, it's a good story just to have something like this where it's the first Gundam that was designed by someone that wasn't from Japan 100%. to get like a main line. Wolf feature back. in a show Thanks like so much that. for checking us out. Hello, my friend. So, Ben, I also have something else. So, these are spicy peanuts. Ooh, okay. That sounds up my so alley. So, we... <laughs> I, I want to get a drink, man. <laughs> Do you have a drink? You have a drink of water bottle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my water bottle here. Okay. All right, so I don't know how spicy these are going to be, so maybe I, I hope shouldn't so. do that many. I hope they're spicy. I like right, spicy food. Ready? All right, so let's get spicy. Ready? Oh, and one, three, two. two. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit spicy, not much. Not that much. Not as spicy as I thought, but definitely interesting. See, my idea of spicy is like, put whatever will kill me, and then just back it off a little bit. Really? I really like spicy food. Man. <laughs> Find out whatever's going to hurt me and then back it off a bit. Okay, so I'm going to have to... That's going to be my next challenge. So, uh, when it says MG Turn X. Yes, I mentioned that this this is a pair of units. There's the mm -hmm. Turn A and the Turn X. The Turn X is these two suits combined together. Right. We're the responsible for wiping out technology. The decimation of the human race. Yes, and there was a guy that brought in that kit at some point here, and they made a master grade of that as well. Really? A while after this, but same thing, like a very unique design. The Turn X is even stranger, though, because the Turn X, all of its body parts will shoot off, separate, and attack you from different directions, like independent units. So he'll shoot off his arm, his leg, his backpack, his other arm, his other foot, and they'll all fire at you from every angle with different weapons. And then return back to you. And then they'll return back to him, yes. That so, wasn't the kid that Varun had, right? Uh, I think it might have been him. With the, like the different attachments that come on to the sides of it? Like, he had it last week. Um, I don't think it was that one. I can't oh, recall okay. which one that was. But it's, And then when was that released? When was that? When was the X released? The X was a few years after, and that one was a shock, too, because well, nobody expected it. You got a picture of it? I think it's in here. Okay, let's take a moment. Let's see if it's in here. Yes, the Turn X. Yes, there we go. Camera two. That's the turn X. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You can see it's got the X across the chest. Yep, I see it. Dang. Yeah, but that's like the enemy design. And people were pretty shocked when that got a kit too because uh, that's even more strange of a design than the turn A was. Yeah. When they're going into, when they started to hash out the design, the second phase where things have been hammered out. You can see all the detail there in the backpack. That's the, kind of the similar thing. The, the thing that the Turn A units have in common is they don't tend to carry their weapons. They tend to all be built in. So you can see there he's got this backpack. He's got a ton of weapons inside of it, and they just all kind of slide out. You see he's got a, a rocket launcher, a handgun, a huh. beam rifle. Killer, bro. Yeah. Killer. Well, I have one more. So something sweet to end the show with. So I found these. Ooh, what are these? And you can take whichever you guys, whichever you would like to take home. I think I'm going to take the spicy So they're ones. boba. Ooh. Sesame. No, they're actually individually packed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought they were like <laughs> so, These look good. These are very interesting. Boba milk tea grain snacks. Oh, they're like little, like, they're like little squared out cookies. And they're actually soft. Very nice. Oh, they're chewy. Man, it does taste like boba tea. <laughs> it does. That's you pretty it, good. You know what the texture is like? It's like a Fig Newton. Yeah, it's like a Fig Newton crossed with like a little cake. 100%. We always like to keep it different here. So if you have an Oriental store or an Oriental market in your neighborhood, I mean, go and support them. I know we have a bunch of them local here around Flynn. So anyway, guys, any last questions? We're going to give you a minute or two to get those last questions in. Comments. Wen says get some Chinese mochi. We had mochi one, one week. We definitely had one mochi one week. Yeah, I am a fiend for mochi. I love mochi. <laughs> Sean says, I am loving they I'm loving they build anime is getting love. Yes. The the build the build shows are great. Um even just disregarding any of the story or anything like that, it's just great because they pull in designs from other stuff. Okay. So you'll see like designs from 
fairly old Gundam stuff. Like I said, the Wadom. Nobody thought the Wadom was going to come back. But in a Build Fighter show, it's like, oh, this is so unique, and the character can make it, and that be your own, and then you get to see a suit that didn't get to do too much back then do something now with modern animation. It's very neat to see. Killer. And, okay, so Sean says airbrush stuff, so maybe next week you want to try to do some airbrush yeah, stuff. Yeah, we, well, now that we now that I have access to everything, we just kind of kind of dole it out little by little, but I can course, focus 100%. episodes more because now I have access to all my stuff. I just wanted to do one specifically to highlight this book that I had to talk about some of these more outlandish Gundam designs, some of the more unique stuff, and to also highlight something we had that had just come in for you guys to get. So everything here kind of revolved around turn A because that's what we have coming out for you guys to buy. And it's also just a cool focus on stuff that's maybe some more recent fans wouldn't know about. Do you have a question on yours? I see on your screen to the say. Yeah, but the guy's already gone off. He was asking about my opinions about Gundam Age, which is another Gundam side story. Okay. A more recent one. And my opinions about the designs and the possibility for making those into costumes. So if you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to get them to us throughout the week. And then Ben has been doing a great job kind of like curating our uh, channels or our, excuse me, our live streams. And once again, I'm recording the audio. So if you're watching this at some point in time or listening to this at some point in time online, uh, you know, by all means, check out our live streams at Flynn's Gaming FL and Uber's Cosplay. So this is Eddie Acevedo reporting live from Flynn's Arcade in Margate, Florida. Thanks so much for tuning in for Let's Talk Gundam with Uber's Cosplay. Reach out to Uber's if you have any questions. He's an open book. Right. Um, Tell us about the anytime. kind of stuff you'd want to see, too, Heck guys. Yeah. I have a lot of model kits out there from just about every kind of Gundam series there's been. If you'd like to see something in particular featured, or if you would just like us to talk about some kind of model kit that maybe not even Gundam, yeah, let us let us know, and we'll we'll see what we or got. Like a, or like a technique, about. or a painting this. Or yeah, like he does by airbrush, or brushes, or airbrushing. Now we can be. talk about that. Now that I have access to my stuff. And we'll definitely bring it to that next level, guys. So right. we really appreciate you guys watching, and thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Eddie, and he is... Oh, <laughs> I'm Ben for <laughs> Uber's Cosplay. <laughs> Uber's Cosplay. I'm like, who, who am I? I don't know. <laughs> we hope to see you guys tomorrow, $10 Tuesday at Flynn's. Remember, Mario Kart 8 tournament on Friday the 30th at 7 p.m. You could win a Switch first place, and then we're going to do a little Halloween get-together pizza party thing. And, uh, yeah, Mandalorian's also coming out if you're a Star Wars fan. So that's coming out as well uh, in the next couple of days, I think, on the 30th at midnight. So, anyways, guys, appreciate you a lot, and we will catch you later. Bye. Take care, guys.